Hello, and welcome to our show. If you're watching this tape, it's a safe bet that you're interested in Armstrong Swiftlock Laminate Flooring. Maybe you've already bought your new flooring at Lowe's. If you have, terrific choice. Armstrong's Whitlock Laminate Flooring is designed exclusively for Lowe's and it's tailored to your needs. It's a great product from a name you know you can trust. But before we get more familiar with laminate flooring and how to install it, we'd better orient you to this tape. We've tried to make it easy for you to find your way through this tape by breaking it into segments. Each segment has a numbered, color-coded geometric shape so you can find it easily. And there's a visible time reference in the corner to guide you. You can scan through to check out just those installation steps you're interested in or review those that may have left you a little uncertain. In any event, it's all here. Everything you need to know to install your new laminate floor. And won't it be nice to be able to say you did it yourself? You really did make a great choice in Armstrong Swiftlock flooring. The rich, authentic wood visuals and the warm tile looks add a comfortable, wonderful feeling to just about any room. But it doesn't just look good. This floor performs. That's because of the unique way it's constructed. First, on top, is the tough wear layer, which protects the floor. Because of this layer, your floor won't stain or fade from exposure to sunlight and it won't wear through. Second, under the wear layer is the image layer. Wood grain or tile patterns so authentic they look like they're fresh from the forest or quarry. But they were recreated by a high quality printing process. Third, under the image is a high density green fiberboard core that provides moisture resistance, dimensional stability, and helps resist gouging and indentation. And fourth is the backing, a balancing layer that resists moisture and keeps the Armstrong laminate flooring flat. Armstrong Swiftlock laminate flooring will stand up to the everyday disasters your family dishes out and keep its rich appearance for years and years. Armstrong Swiftlock laminate flooring is installed with what's called a floating floor system. It is never attached to the subfloor in any way. The reason it floats is to allow it to expand and contract with seasonal changes in temperature and humidity. It's perfectly natural, but to allow the flooring to expand, you'll need to leave a quarter inch gap around the entire perimeter of the room. You'll make that gap disappear with coordinated molding pieces for a beautiful finish. This floating, good-looking, durable floor is surprisingly easy to install, and you can do it with basic woodworking tools. Let's take a look. You'll want to have everything you need before you begin installing your new floor. By all means, bring home a DIY laminate floor installation kit. This kit contains a pull bar, and interlocking spacers and an instruction manual. We recommend you use the instruction manual in conjunction with this videotape. Besides the installation kit, you'll need some common hand tools. A tape measure, hammer, saw, a square, a drill, utility knife, a pencil, a laminate flooring touch-up kit or wood filler, polyethylene tape, and a pry bar if you have existing quarter round or other moldings that have to be removed. You should also wear safety glasses and a NIOSH design dust mask. If you're installing your swift lock flooring in a bathroom or other high moisture areas such as under a dishwasher or a refrigerator with an ice machine, you'll need laminate floor glue. Laminate floor glue is specifically designed to make the installation easy and provide a strong, durable, water-resistant bond between the pieces of flooring. A pre-drilled hole in the tip ensures just the right amount of glue. We recommend applying a 3 seconds inch bead. Here's what a 3 seconds inch bead looks like with a 3 seconds inch drill bit for reference. If the glue bottle gets clogged at any point during your installation, we recommend you puncture the clogged tip with a 3 seconds inch bit rather than clip the tip of the nozzle. 
If you're gluing your floor together, you'll also need a plastic scraper, a bucket of warm water, and clean cotton rags. For bathrooms, you'll also need 100% silicone caulk. You'll also need underlayment to put under your new laminate floor. Armstrong's Quiet Comfort Premium Underlayment and 2-in-1 Advanced Underlayment provide a cushion, help absorb sound, provide a thermal barrier, and compensate for slight subfloor imperfections over any subfloor. Armstrong's Moisture Barrier Sheeting should be used instead of Quiet Comfort or 2-in-1 when installing laminate that already has an attached foam underlayment. All three Armstrong underlayments provide a moisture barrier when installing over concrete subfloors. Over concrete, seal against migrating moisture by taping the seams of the underlayment with polyethylene tape. Lowe's provides a line of coordinated transition pieces and moldings to dress up your installation. There's quarter round to transition from base molding to the flooring. Reducer strips to make the transition from your Armstrong laminate flooring to another type of flooring. Baby threshold for use against carpet and around sliding glass doors, tubs, or toe kicks. T moldings for use in doorways or entryways or when your room is longer than 40 feet or wider than 26 feet. Overlap step nose moldings for landings or step downs. And flush stair nose for landings, step downs, and stairs. So you'll want to make sure you have all the right transition pieces to finish your floor beautifully. And that's all you'll need, except for the laminate flooring itself. Before you buy it, you'll have to estimate how much you'll need for your room. We'll cover how in the next segment. To determine how much Armstrong Swiftlock laminate flooring material to buy, begin by taking the measurements of the room in which you plan to install it and converting those measurements into square feet. Take that number and divide it by the square footage contained in a single box of Swiftlock flooring. Check your carton. We'll use 21 as an example. Once you have that number, round up to the nearest whole number and then add one more box for every 200 square feet of flooring. Rolls of underlayment cover 100 square feet. Bottles of glue also cover 100 square feet in a standard installation. There is very little waste in a laminate flooring installation, but you will need a little extra flooring material. That extra carton per 200 square feet should cover it. When you bring your new flooring home, place the cartons flat on the floor before installation, not on edge. During installation, the room temperature should be 65 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and the humidity should be 65% or less. This is important for the overall stability of the floor installation, and it's necessary for any wood-based flooring product. One of the nice things about Armstrong Swiftlock laminate flooring is that you can install it over virtually any existing floor. Wood and wood underlayment, concrete, ceramic and resilient tile, resilient sheet flooring, even carpet if it's fully adhered to a wood subfloor and no more than one quarter inch thick. Also, radiant heated subfloors are acceptable as long as the surface temperature does not exceed 85 degrees Fahrenheit. That means you don't have to pull up old floors and deal with the mess or the hassle of repairing most subfloor damage. Just make sure the old subfloor meets building codes and is structurally sound, dry, clean, and flat. Fill in any major gaps, holes, or cracks in wood or concrete floors with the appropriate patch. Concrete must be fully cured and must not show signs of moisture or alkali. We recommend you test for moisture in concrete before installation. Tape 3 foot by 3 foot pieces of polyethylene to the subfloor. After 24 hours, if moisture condensation appears on the film or the concrete appears dark colored, it's likely excessive moisture is present and you'll want to consult a professional to run a calcium chloride test to determine whether laminate is the right choice for this environment. Check out the existing baseboard molding. If there's quarter round, you'll want to remove it, and you'll probably want to replace it with the molding that matches your new floor.
If the existing baseboard molding will accommodate the addition of the quarter round to cover the one quarter inch gap that you'll create when you install the laminate flooring, you can leave the baseboard in place. You will have to undercut door trims to make sure that the laminate floor floats freely under these trim pieces. Use a piece of underlayment and laminate flooring to guide the height of the cut. You may also find that you'll have to plane or cut the bottom of doors because of the increased floor height. Okay, after you've cleaned up any dirt and debris, you're ready to begin the installation. The next step is to begin the layout of the floor. To decide where to begin, consider incoming light. It is usually best to install Armstrong Swiftlock laminate flooring with the planks running parallel to light coming in windows or glass doors. For any installation, the starting wall should be long and as straight as possible. So find the longest, straightest wall parallel to the incoming light and that's where you'll begin. We recommend a good quality carbide tipped cutting blade, the type designed for cutting composition and laminate materials such as melamine or coreboard. Be sure to put on your safety glasses and face mask before you cut and follow the tool manufacturer's safety instructions. When using a handheld power saw, keep the decorative side facing down to minimize chipping. Cut the material in an area away from the installation site to control sawdust. You can use a handsaw, but cut with the decorative side of the board facing up to minimize chipping. Use a square to keep your cut line straight. If you have any rough or irregularly shaped obstacles in your room, you may have to make a paper pattern of the shape of the object. Then transfer the pattern to the flooring material and cut it to fit. Pipes passing through the floor are no problem either. If the pipe is near the end of a board, measure, locate, and cut a hole one half inch larger than the pipe. Cut across the board through the center of the hole. Glue the pieces in place. Tighten the joints and use spacers at the perimeter of the room to keep the board snug during installation. If the pipe passes through near the edge of a board, measure, locate, and cut a hole one half inch larger than the pipe. Cut at a 45 degree angle from the edge of the board to the hole. And glue the pieces in place Tighten the joints and use spacers at the perimeter of the room to keep the board snug during installation. Before you install your new floor, consider the placement and type of the various moldings and transition pieces you will be using to finish the job. Using quarter round doesn't require any pre-planning, but in areas where you'll use other transitions, such as reducer strips, baby thresholds, or T-moldings, you may need to expand the gap to accommodate the base of the transition piece. In rooms that are longer than 40 feet or wider than 26 feet, or when the laminate flooring continues through a doorway to another room, you'll need a T-molding. There's an optional metal track system that can be used with reducer strips, baby thresholds, and T-moldings. Begin the installation by rolling out a strip of underlayment along the starting wall and cutting it to length. You'll roll out additional pieces of underlayment as the installation progresses, being careful not to overlap the edges of the underlayment. You'll want to avoid narrow pieces at the finish wall. 
Check it out by measuring the distance between the start and finish walls. Divide the distance by the width of your flooring. That's normally seven and a half inches. But check your carton for dimensions. If the remainder is less than two and a half inches, cut off two and a half inches from the tongue side of each board in the starting row. Armstrong Swiftlock flooring is packaged very carefully, but you should inspect each piece prior to installation for damage. And we recommend you mix boards from three open boxes of flooring at a time. Begin in the left-hand corner and place the tongue side of the first board against the wall. Place one one-quarter inch wide spacer at the start of each row and three spacers along the length of each plank as you lay them down. Working from left to right, join the tongue and groove on the short edges or end of the boards at an angle and then lock them together. Continue laying pieces in the first row until you come to the end. You'll almost certainly have to cut this last piece. Measure the space. If this distance is less than 8 inches, go back to the first plank in the row and cut off 8 inches. Reposition the pieces in the row and then remeasure Subtract one quarter inch for the gap on that side and mark the board with a pencil and a square. Cut the last piece in the first row. Lock it in place. And use a spacer or two at the end. Don't worry if the gap is a little more than one quarter inch. You can use two spacers together, lying on their sides, as a wedge to keep the whole row together. Begin the second row with the piece left from the end of the first row if it is 8 inches or longer. Otherwise, cut a new board in half to begin the second row. Lock together the long edge of the first board in the second row to the first row, leaving it raised up off the subfloor at its natural angle. Angle the end joint of the second board in the second row to the end of the first board and lock them together. Then angle up slightly and push the second board forward until its long edge locks into the first row. The first two boards in the second row should still be angled up off the subfloor. Follow the same angle-angle procedure with the remaining boards in the second row. When all the boards in the second row are in place, walk or press that entire row flat to the subfloor. You may need to use a pull bar to tighten the joints. Use gentle pressure and tapping and use a spacer or two at the end. Continue building rows of flooring until you've worked your way across the room. You may have to cut the last row of boards lengthwise. Just place a row of boards on top of the last row you installed. Then use dividers or a piece of the flooring material with the bottom of the groove cut off to trace the contour of the wall. Use a spacer between the pencil and the piece of board to add the one quarter inch gap that's needed at the finish wall. Cut the boards and lock them in place using a pull bar if necessary to make the joints tight. Installation of locking laminate through a door jam may require reducing the size of the lip of the groove. Using a small plane or utility knife, plane or shave off 75% of the ledge of the groove. After the groove ledge has been trimmed, place the board in position laterally and lightly tap the board into place using the pull bar. Sometimes more than one pass may be necessary in order to trim the ledge of the groove to the correct height. Apply a thin 3 32nd inch bead of glue on top of the tongue at this juncture to ensure joint integrity.
Now you can remove the spacers from around the perimeter of the room and install the transition pieces. If you pre-drill coordinated transitions before nailing or screwing them to the subfloor, you'll find them easier to install and you'll make a neater job of it. And to make sure you let the laminate floor float freely, fasten the transition pieces to the wall or subfloor, not the laminate floor or underlayment. You can easily fill nail holes using a laminate floor touch-up kit or wood filler. You can also install these transition pieces using a good quality construction adhesive applied to the wall or subfloor, not the laminate floor or underlayment. If you have a step down or landing in your room, depending on the flooring you've chosen, you may use either overlap step nosing or flush stair nosing. With overlap step nosing, cut a temporary wooden block one and one half inch wide. Screw or nail it in place with one edge flush with the edge of the step down. Install swift lock flooring up to the block using one quarter inch spacers to create an expansion zone. Remove the spacers and block and pre-drill the step nosing for finishing nails. Apply a 3 inch bead of construction adhesive in a serpentine pattern to the back of the nosing and adhere it in place. Then fasten the step nosing in place with finishing nails. With flush stair nosing on a step down or landing, start by cutting the nosing to length. If you need more than one length of nosing, cut the ends at a 45 degree angle. Apply construction adhesive in a serpentine pattern and adhere it in place. Over wood subfloors, pre-drill and nail the nosing as well. Then install the underlayment and the laminate flooring from the nosing into the room. Match the factory tongue on the boards to the factory groove on the nosing. If you're installing Armstrong Swiftlock flooring on stairs, you'll need to fully adhere the flooring to the stairs without using underlayment. This is the only time you adhere boards directly to another surface. Begin by cutting off the bull nose of the existing stair treads flush with the risers. Beginning at the bottom riser, measure and if necessary, cut a piece of laminate flooring to fit flush with the top of the existing riser. Be sure to measure from the top of the flooring to account for the one quarter inch gap between the flooring and the first riser. Apply construction adhesive in a serpentine pattern to the back of the flooring and adhere it in place. Be sure that the piece does not slip down into the one quarter inch expansion gap. Dry fit the stair nose molding to the front edge of the first tread and measure the distance to the riser. Cut a laminate board to length and to the measured width and apply construction adhesive to the existing tread. Spread the adhesive evenly with a 1 inch square notch trowel. Adhere the board in place, leaving the factory tongue exposed to be joined with the groove in the stair nose molding. Apply construction adhesive in a serpentine pattern to the back of the stair nose molding. Then apply a bead of laminate floor glue to the top of the tongue of the board. Push the pieces together until the joint is tight. Over wood subfloors, drill and finish nail the stair nose molding in place. There are many different stairway installation situations which are more intricate than the one we're showing. If your stairway installation differs from the one shown in this section, we recommend you hire a professional to install laminate on your stairs.
If you're installing Armstrong SwiftLock laminate flooring in a full bath, you'll have to use laminate flooring glue to ensure a water seal. You'll have to remove the toilet first. Then start the first row with the tongue of the boards against the starting wall. Apply a 3 32nd inch bead of glue to the top side of the tongue on the short side of the boards before locking them together. In the second and subsequent rows, you'll have to apply a 3 32nd inch bead of glue to the top side of the tongue on both the short and long sides of the boards. Angle and join the boards at the ends of the boards first. Then the long sides as you did without glue. As you lock the boards together, a fine continuous line of glue should ooze to the surface at the joints. This ensures the joints will be water resistant after drying. Remove the excess glue with a plastic scraper or credit card and damp cloth. Follow up with a clean dry cotton cloth to remove any residue before it dries. Clean up the glue within an hour. It will be much more difficult and time consuming to remove it if it dries on the surface of the laminate. Leave an expansion zone between the laminate flooring and the toilet flange, as well as around the perimeter of the room. You can use a baby threshold molding if you have a straight tub or shower base. If it's not straight, just build in an expansion zone when you install the laminate flooring. Then completely fill in the zone with 100% silicone caulk. When the floor is completed, fill in all the other expansion zones with 100% silicone caulk to seal out moisture. While Armstrong SwiftLock laminate flooring is durable, no floor is indestructible. But you can easily make minor nicks or scratches disappear with a laminate floor touch-up kit. In case of a major problem with SwiftLock, it is possible to replace an entire piece of the flooring. In most cases, all you have to do is remove the quarter round molding from the walls nearest the damaged board and remove the boards by unlocking them, carefully working back to the damaged one. Then replace the damaged board with a new one and reassemble the floor. That's it. Now you can relax and enjoy your wonderful new floor. And you don't have to tell anyone how easy it was to do it yourself. Oh, and if you glued your floor together, don't worry if you notice some swelling at the seams for the first six to eight weeks. You didn't do anything wrong. Some swelling is perfectly normal until the floating floor settles comfortably into place. It's easy to keep your new Armstrong SwiftLock laminate floor looking great, too. You don't have to polish or wax it. In fact, you shouldn't. Just vacuum, but avoid beater bars. Use a dust mop or wipe with a damp cloth. For spills, just wipe up or squirt and wipe with a laminate floor cleaner. For stubborn stains, use nail polish remover with acetone on a clean cloth and wipe with a damp cloth when you're finished. Never pour nail polish remover directly on the floor. We recommend using felt floor protectors on furniture legs to prevent scratching. Floor protectors, floor cleaner, all the accessories and tools you need to install your new floor, as well as a broad selection of beautiful SwiftLock patterns are available at your neighborhood Lowe's store. Armstrong SwiftLock Laminate Flooring. It's beautiful, durable, easy to install, and easy to live with. It's a floor you can believe in. From the most trusted name in flooring, Armstrong.